All right, Renato's back in Rubicon's basement, and we are doing 2,400 point battle. We have Orc and Goblin versus Chaos, new Chaos book. 50 Night Goblin spears with nets. I have a level 2 Shaman hiding behind that thingy there. We have the flying uh, Orc boss, Savage, I think it's a Savage Orc. I have to double check my list. But he's on the flying carpet. We have Pumpling. Pump wagon number one with the roller and the sail. Pump wagon number two, roller sail. Pump wagon number three with the roller with the sail. 40 Savage Orc Biggins with the level four shaman with the shrunken head. We have the general of the army, naked orc. We have five wolf riders. We don't know first turn, so they haven't vanguarded yet. We have the mangler, pump wagon with the roller and sail. Two doom divers. Five <clears throat> goblins and wolves, and another mangler. And then facing the orcs and goblins are oops, the general of your army. Who's that? Uh, level four Zench Demon Prince. Level four Zench Demon Prince. The Chimera. Chimera. The Mutilus vor Vortex Beast. Geez, that's a mouthful. The Giant. These are both going to be converted. Uh, whatever they're. War Shrines. War Shrines. Corn Chaos Warriors, 20 of them, full command, Banner of Rage, three Chaos Chariots, and inside the building is a Wizard level 1 Sench. Oh boy. And we're going to do Vanguard and then get back after first turn, or first movement. Alright, I fear this is going to be a very quick game, folks. The Savage Orc on the flying carpet flew over there. These pumpling, pump wagons just went crazy. This red one rolled 18 on three dice. I have the sale to give me four dice, but I didn't even three six-sided dice. So he moved way up there. The black one moved way up there. That one moved way up there. Uh, the level two shaman moved up just a little bit. Then behind the uh, general of the army. Savage orcs here. Failed animosity. Squabbled with them. They threw stuff at each other. So they're both stuck there. Uh, let's see. Mangler flew way up there. This pump wagon flew way up there. Flew, I mean, it just moved really fast. The Just trying to stay out of six inches in case I get magic or cause panic dust with the wolves. And then of course this mangler squig went just all full of gusto, went way up there. And we're on to uh, magic. <laughs> Alright, so in magic uh, I rolled up four dice. You had four or you five? Had 16 and I had three plus my champ. Yeah, he had a lot. But he has a magic sorcerer for this army that he boosted up so he's, oh this guy here. He's so channeling on a four up. Sexy four up, girl. reroll one. Four up, reroll ones to channel. So, anyways, I cast the vortex from the little guy over there, and and he just rolled dice to dispel. But I have a feeling he's got something up his sleeve because he's asking me how many magic users I have. <laughs> anyways, we also have a question about the mangler squig because in the rules it says they are destroyed if a unit moves into contact with them. It says move. It doesn't say charge into contact. But I, I think we're just going to play it as if a unit can charge and declare the charge and make the charge. That that was way you can, but I mean the rule book says that you move into contact. Um, charging is part of the movement, so I think that's how we're going to play it. But question for everybody: leave a comment, and we'll get back on to uh, movement magic, and we're on to shooting. All right, so in shooting, Doom Divers shot both at the general over there. First one missed, drifted off, couldn't redirect on. Second one hit, did two. I ward save one, so sitting on one wound, and we're on to Renato's turn one. All right, so Sexy Demon Prince moved up here. Uh, Renato completed a lot of charges. The, uh, not the Manticore, I can't remember what it was. It's the one with the three, the, whatever that flying thing is. Moved there, his giant made the charge against the pump wagon. The Vortex Beast moved there. He had two war shrines. The first war shrine made the charge against my mangler, and he suffered the penalty for that so he destroyed the mangler but the war shrine also got destroyed by the force of destruction of the mangler obviously completed the charge here he was going for a flank charge with that chariot into the red sail pump wagon but failed and we let him retake it because then that chariot winded up blocking the second chariot into there so we just redid it as if that chariot would go first uh, but that chariot that did not fail then he repositioned that chariot and 65, 65 points for a mangler. Double this point, 
Awesome, double the point, I'm way ahead. So we're on to Renato's magic, and this is where the cheese begins. All right, so in magic phase, we rolled up some dice. He tried to cast the teardrop uh, template at the mangler, we let it go, and uh, wound up not wounding, and then he tried the infernal gateway, the mangler, and he rolled 16 exactly, and with the same number of dice, I bumped up 22. So now we are on uh, hand to hand movement magic because you don't have any shooting, right? No. no shooting. I think the vortex beast should be able to spit a big slime of magic out and as a, like a catapult. Anyways, um, all right, on the hand to hand stuff. All right, giant came in, smacked around the pump wagon. These guys came in, smacked around the pump wagon, didn't roll high enough to get into the wolves. And this cherry came in, smacked around the pump wagon, <laughs> and is there. So uh, it's movement magic, shooting hand to hand. Renato's turn, thankfully, is over. On to Orc and Goblin turn two. <laughs> two All right, so he's rolling channeling everybody before it's over. So here's what happened. After a lot of debate on this side of the table here, <clears throat> I declared charge Savage Orcs in that chariot. As you can see, things didn't work out. Pumpling pump wagon was going to go into those warriors. I thought it was in the flank, but we looked and it wasn't. So then I thought I'd take a long charge and need to 14 to get into that. And with the sail, I get to roll four die six if I pump harder. So I, I rolled two ones. It went random. And of course, instead of going into the chariot that's right there, ran into the savage orcs, which of course now can't charge because they're blocked. Took off five of my own guys. And uh, so that's how that all happened. So that's it. And then in my ineptness, I forgot to move stuff. So I forgot to move those guys. And I forgot to move those guys. <laughs> Compulsory, I did move the mangler. Right now, I was going to let me move these guys. And uh, that guy flew up there. And that magic user popped there. And that's pretty much where we stand. Right, I'm going to move these wolf riders and we'll get back. It's 560 <laughs> points. <laughs> but it's still alive. All right, so listen. Here, we cast Bigfoot of Gork and Renato's upset at the foot of Gork. <laughs> But he still got both models out of the time. They just happened to be under both templates. I stomped five times, and his general still has a wound left, and what's his chimera still has a wound left. So they both still have wounds left. I double sixed it and lost my level four. So, YouTube lad, you be the judge of Gork stomping five times in a row and him still having two models on the table <laughs> and me losing my level four. All right, I grant it, it's crazy, but still. If I can kill them with a Doom Diver, that made me happy. So, anyways, okay, on to Doom Diver. Because Renato loves the Doom Divers. They, I have to get rid of them now. The Avenger Level 4. Alright, we'll be back after uh, shooting. Alright, so Doom Diver did, in fact, hit the Demon Prince, but did not cause a wound. The second Doom Diver just went a little bit crazy. So, we are on to Renato's turn. Jeez, this is only your turn, too. I know. Oh my god. Alright, so. Test frenzy test, not to charge the wolf riders. Both of those made it in. Again, that's the big super beasty zinch thing for the new kit. And Mutilist. and what was the vortex. other thing called? The uh, vortex beast. And then your eye of the gods thingy, cherry thing. And then the giant, the chimera made it in here. The sexy girl made it into that one. Can't believe they passed terror checks. And of course the chariot made it in there, and he finangled some stuff over there, and we are into magic. And yeah, that's it, magic. Alright, after about a half hour of discussing the merits of direct damage spells and how you can actually cast them, I think we got it straightened out. We've been playing wrong, but I've been playing wrong. I thought we had this uh, conversation once before, but now we're all cleared up. So anyways, basically, we figured out that I wasn't stopping correctly. Is that right? Yeah, because I wasn't in. The yeah, park. I wasn't stomping them correctly, but still, five stomps was kind of fun. <laughs> so we're back on track. But well, we're going to continue to play, uh, even though we messed up. I messed up the direct damage spell thing. It's back on track. His magic after. Geez, that took a long time. Cast a couple spells, a couple bounce spells. Nothing went through. Cast the war shrine thing. Um, plus, his one plus one strength thing. Oh, your guy got the plus one strength, right? Yeah, yeah he got the plus one strength. She tried to spew some template thing on these guys and I just spelled it and then you cast something else but again we spent like half hour discussing direct damage so movement magic shooting hand to hand oh this is gonna be bad all right we'll be back <clears throat> Renato put the smack down on the goblins here we uh took a charge from both of those obliterated the wolf riders there and he chose to overran to get away from that mangler and uh took those down here 
his sexy demon prince girl uh, just made mincemeat of the catapult she's off the board these guys night goblins actually put two wounds on the giant failed to wound the chimera it was such a bummer He's sitting on one wound left uh, they lost 16 guys steadfast and passed their steadfast on a five uh, even though the general's right there he's not in the unit so they were steadfast on their own chariot killed the pump wagon overran killed it completely didn't uh, crumble it he's there and the shaman there passed his leadership to stay so we are on to my turn whatever three i think right we'll get back yeah so here we go savage orc on the carpet charge the guy in the building Mangler needed a 12 to get in, rolled a 7, to fail to get in to do any damage. Magic user came over here, he's going to try to vortex down the line there. This one moved over here, just a little bit, so if the savages win... Oh, I can't overrun because I'm frenzied, I have to. Yeah, oops. Okay, so I cast a spell stupidly with this magic user here to lower the hex spell on those knights so that they have to reroll sixes on to hit to wound and armor saves. Thinking that once I cast the vortex and went through that would be something but then the vortex does not allow for armor saves at all anyways. So I did double six the vortex and I shot it through and hit the big carnifax thing which is represented the vortex beast and the war shrine and that neither one of these took a wound. It was a strength test, right? Toughness? Toughness, Toughness test. Sense. They passed, they passed, and I killed four warriors there. And then, of course, on the double six miscast thing, large round template, I rolled a four, got sucked into the warp with my level four. So now my level two and my level four are both in the warp. And we have shooting. We'll be right back. And All right, so Renato pointed out that the vortex did not harm the vortex beast. <laughs> so, and then we figured out, too, that what was your demon prince gets... Zench, but it doesn't give a plus one more save. They re-roll one. Yeah, so we were playing the... And we did the stop wrong, but then we also did the ward save wrong. Right, so the ward save, we, he was ward saving on a four up. Four up and re-roll ones. You were no, doing both, right? Four up. Four up. Four up. It should have been re-roll one. Yeah, it should have been a five up ward and uh, re-roll the ones. So we were doing that wrong. So she's sitting on one wound, she probably should have been dead. But well, we did, I was stomping on her wrong anyway. So here we are, and we have some hand to hand. And Savage Work charged that guy in the building. So I, we'll get back and see how this all plays out. All right, I skipped the mo uh, shooting phase. I, I shot that. Uh, War Shrine. War Shrine, thank you. And uh, three up ward save. I hate it. But then over here, in close combat, I go before the Chimera, and I'm thinking I need 13. I still only need to get one wound on that thing to kill it. So out of 13 attacks, I hit five times, and then to wound it, I need a six, and that's what I rolled. Yep, five ones. And the giant yellow and ball, so you win by two. I'm steadfast on a five, so now I'm going to attack the giant, see what happens no, there. No more fighting. No more fighting. I don't even get to... My Chimera doesn't get to fight either. Doesn't even get to fight. So, all right. I, uh... I lose by two, but I'm steadfast. Yeah, it says, neither the cast giant nor models in contact with them actually fight if they have not done so this round. Okay. I automatically win by two. But I'm steadfast. I don't know. It just says I'm automatically win by two. Let's see if it matters. <laughs> yes. Look at five ones, and then I come over here and roll double six. So I fail my steadfast anyways, but that's another question, right? Giant wins by two. Does that affect the steadfast? But does that affect steadfast? Because steadfast I have, so I'd be steadfast five. No, I think your steadfast is still five. You think it is too? Mm -hmm. I, I, I win by two. So if I would have won by two by doing an extra two wounds. Right. You know what I mean? I so, still be five. Yeah, so you good still point. Filming. All right. Yep, still filming. I wanted to get our discussion. I just think it's sick that I rolled six for that and five ones for that. Anyways. Okay, so uh, I am going to flee and we'll get back. All right, yep, he broke them. Stood past five, they're gone. Passed the panic test, they're good. Demon Prince coming back on the table. We can make a normal move after that. And Oh, those Night Goblins aren't there. Uh, I'm just putting them there because they're dead. So we should film it like this. Okay, we'll get back after an hour. Okay, so he charged in with both of these and killed a bunch of Savage Orcs, and I did failed my steadfast. I ran, but he didn't run me down. And before, we didn't move it because before we did the Chimera battle, um, I fled and I just barely touched the Chimera's base by like an eighth of an inch, which then bounces my unit through and off the table. 
These guys both pursued about four inches. I did do two wounds to the War Shrine and two wounds to the uh, Vortex Beast. And the combat over here with the Chimera, uh, my general went first and with no special weapons or anything, I just put the last wound on the Chimera. And we're gonna call it here because uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna rally my Savage Orcs maybe. Uh, oh no, they're off the table. That's right, they're off the table. And so I'm gonna dance around this guy. But all I'm basically gonna have left is uh, I got my general, which he's probably gonna eat soon. I have a Savage Orc on flying carpet in the house, and I have those Night Goblins, which are gonna die. He came over here and combat reform. Swift combat reform and went out of the mangler just to get it out of the way. So he's going to conserve those points because I have nothing that I can I can get. So all I have is savage work on the carpet. I have those guys which are probably going to die in the next two turns, and my lord warlord which I'm sure he can eat with his demon prince because he flies. So and as far as magic, I only have the spell that allows me to force him to reroll sixes to hit to wound an armor save, and then I have something that gives my guys poison. So I, I really don't have anything that can handle the rest of his stuff. And he's way ahead on points anyways. So anyway, so we called it, and I think tomorrow he's going to come up and, uh, and play my son. So we'll get to see him on film. And uh, thanks for watching.